All right, gents, let's preview another big last 16 game coming up in the World Cup. Portugal against Switzerland. Nick, will this be tight and tense? Because th these two teams have met quite a few times over the years, a lot of experienced campaigners on both teams. And it looks like, you know, you mentioned it before, Cristiano Ronaldo, there's a, a bit of a, a debate, shall we say, or not really a debate. <laughs> People in Portugal do not want him to start, and they think that Portugal will be better off without him started. So... That is a, an intriguing side story to this, right? Because we know how important Ronaldo has been for Portugal over the years. But, you know, he's had a bit of a rough month, I guess. He is, he's, you know, not, not been uh, welcomed at Manchester United. He's out there. And now in his homeland, where he was basically as a godlike status, now they're not keen on him either. So, um, yeah, what's your thoughts on Portugal against Switzerland? Well, all it takes is one loss to really make people people wonder. Yeah. But I think the issue is not, I don't want to say it's not terribly different than it was at Man United. Um, but then I want to say, look at how many Manchester United players are having wonderful tournaments. And maybe it is the same thing. He's at this stage of his Just career, say it, Nick. Just say it. He's washed? Yep. Is he? I mean, at this stage of his career, guys like him are coming off the bench, naturally yeah. accepting of it and knowing their role. And he, he's got to get a new advisor. I'm not going to tell you that he won't score an incredible goal. He's a physical specimen. He'll get in positions to score, but he's not definitely better than the guy behind him. And I, I've been, yeah. Andy, you made me say it, but I've thought it in my head a lot this year. It's not that he's just another guy, but he is miles off what we know well him he's be. not just another guy but he the the whatever he commands or de maybe demands is is the better word in just term, in terms of respect um and and usage and uh exposure all of those things don't fit this team whatsoever and that just kind of takes away the stylistic misfit of you know he can't run and this is a very very athletic portugal team who's very good at creating space and playing one twos and running into he does none of those things and so it makes sense that they wouldn't want that that, that fans wouldn't want him uh in, in the starting lineup just the way that manchester united fans came to realize very quickly all right, he's scoring goals, but he's doing literally nothing else. And then once that stopped, it was, well, I'm just going to tear everything down in any way that I can. And so, yeah, the, I, in order for them to to make the kind of run, you know, semifinal or final or even win it, because they, they, they can they have the talent. Yeah. I, they have the talent to do it. I do think that they have to, and I don't know how you have that conversation, but I think they have to sit him down and say, listen, 15 minutes, we'll need you. We'll need you at some point. We need a player that can score a goal from nothing. And that's the only contribution we'll ask of you. And that's perfect for him. Maybe the agreement would be, you remember the Euro 2016 final when he was on the bench injured? I but was going to say. Manager and he was alongside them. Maybe they can come to some kind of agreement, him and Fernando Santos. I think he'd like that. He, you know, at least be in the spotlight, uh, even if he isn't on the pitch. But talking about on the pitch for Portugal, you mentioned it there, Andy, very comfortable passing and moving, fluid, so many great attacking and midfield players. And, and Nick, two of those are having phenomenal tournaments and great seasons. Really. Bruno Fernandes surprised me a bit because for Man United, he's been a bit up and down uh, after that incredible first season and a half he had. Mm -hmm. uh, he's recaptured that form, hasn't he, Nick? And Bernardo Silva as well. Been brilliant for Man City for it feels like the last two or three years straight. And those two are just pulling all the strings for Portugal. But their battle against Granit Xhaka, who has had a really good tournament and having a really good season for Arsenal too, that seems like it's going to be the key one to determining uh, the outcome of this game. It does. Uh, there are a few. We did tactical battles for the U.S. and the Netherlands, and there, I, I got to three. I think I had to do three key battles, and I was like, I could do four or five. Um, this is the number one one, though. Like, I want to talk about Diogo Delo. I want to talk about, um, you know, Portugal's bench and what it can do, depending on if Ronaldo is on it. But if if Switzerland can't win that midfield battle, then the game is almost already over. And I love this Portugal midfield. I love the players that they're even putting out there. Uh, a couple of Wolves and Vitinha against South Korea. I know they lost that game, but they are flexing their depth. And we've talked about this so many times now. Portugal's depth is enough to win this entire tournament. Their stars are enough to win this entire tournament. It, Ronaldo honestly, and the way he looms over this roster and, and Diogo Costa as a somewhat unknown 
goalkeeper. Those are question marks. But when you can put Ruben Neves and whoever else out there because he's so commanding, even more maybe for country than club, um, yeah, you can beat anybody. So that is a huge ask for Granit Xhaka. And someone might walk out. <laughs> this is the equivalent of a brass knuckle fight. I mean, yep. it is the equivalent of an all uh, the anchorman fight. What weapons can we use here? You know, that's what this could be. <laughs> Just scrap. Yeah, it's brilliant. Great mixture of experience, defensive solidity, playmaking skills in both of these teams, really, when you look through. Uh, we haven't spoken a lot about Switzerland, but with Shakiri there, uh, Vargas, Freuler, Shaka, these are players. Akanji's having a great season at the back as well. And obviously, Jan Sommer in goal. Um, they've been there and done it at major tournaments the last few times, all together as a group. So um, never write off the Swiss. I think we've all learned that in the last few tournaments, right? They always seem to go at least one step further than we think. But Andy, what do you think is going to happen in this game between Portugal and Switzerland? Is the extra kind of class and depth of the Portuguese side just going to see them through? Yep. Yeah. Switzerland will limit Portugal, but they will not beat them. 1-0. 1-0. All right. Nick, what are you going with, mate? I like that. I don't always repeat, so I will, because this is the World Cup, darn it. one yeah. nothing Portugal. I'm going to go 2-1 to Portugal, and I'm going to be so bold to say it might be 1-0 when Ronaldo's going to come off the bench and score a, a flicked header or a penalty great. kick and then take all the take all the glory. But uh, yeah, head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com for all the latest news. Ahead of Portugal against Switzerland, massive last 16 game. See, you can get into the quarters. We'll have you covered with all the reaction and analysis from that big, big game at this World Cup.